welcome to all of you. Today, Yuta is honored to have Dr. Tan Sui Kyo with us. Let me introduce the background of her. Dr. Tan received her Doctor of Philosophy, Social Science from University Industries Langor and Master of Commerce Applied Accounting from Utah. Professionally, she is an associate member of the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, CIMA, in UK, and an associate member of the Malaysian Institute of Accountants, MIA. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let us start off the session by welcoming the speaker of the day, Dr. Tan. Thank you, Joyce. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, let us go through together things to know when declaring rental income to the Inland Revenue Board. Okay. Okay. Uh, for today's talk, I'm going to cover the following nine areas. First is the, to differentiate the rental income under Section 4A business source or Section 4D non-business source. And also to look into commencement date of letting of properties. And to group the property as one source, it means that if a person, he got uh, a few properties, then he must group the properties into either section 4A or section 4D. Also, I will look into the deposit. Deposit is refundable to the tenant, so it is non-taxable income. Also, I will look into basis of assessment and also expenses relating to income of renting of real property. Whether the expenses incurred when you rent out your property, is it deductible expenses or non-deductible expenses? And also, I will look into temporary non-occupation. When your property temporary non nobody occupied, but you still incurred the expenses, were the expenses deductible or not? During that period, nobody occupied your property. And also, I will look into the rental loss. Can it offset with other sources of income? Also, lastly, I will look into the capital allowance. It means that when the landlord purchase, uh, like for example, purchase uh, furniture and fittings account because it provides a fully furnished house, can it expenses incurred to purchase aircon and furniture and fitting? Is it can offset against the rental income? Uh, so I will look into these nine areas. Okay, how to differentiate the rental income under section 4A or 4D? Okay, section 4A rental income, we say it is under business source. Provided you want to your rental income classified under section 4A, provided the landlord actively provide support and maintenance services to its tenants, either provided by the landlord himself or herself, or they appoint somebody to provide it. Okay, what are the maintenance services or support services provided by the landlord? For example, security services, playing fields, recreational areas, driveways, car parks, landscape areas, walls and fences, exterior lighting or other external fixtures and fittings. If all these services actively provided by the landlord, then we say render received by the landlord is classified under Section 4A business source. And how about for Section 4D investment source, rental income? If the landlord not actively provided all these services, as I mentioned just now, then we say rental income received by the landlord is under classified under Section 4D investment source. Okay, how about the landlord? Uh, uh, the house is a, the owner house is condominium and they got a guard house provided security by the management office. Landlord only pay management fees. No, this is not actively provide services to your tenant. Rental receive still classified under section 4D. Okay, how 
okay, we, I go through three examples with you all, then you may understand better how to differentiate between section 4A and section 4D rental income. First example, Suai Sendiam Bahad owns three blocks of condominium and Suai Sendiam Bahad actively provide maintenance of the leaf cleaning service, security service, centralized account to playground and car parks to its tenants, all provided by this landlord. Okay, due to that, rental income received by Suai Sendiam Bahad is classified as business source, section 4A, rental income. Okay, we go to the next example. Wahida owned four-story building consisting 32 units, used as office and shop lots. And he led up to different tenants. Okay, Wahida, not he, himself, provided the maintenance service to the tenants, but it appointed the agent RV Enterprise to provide all the maintenance services, lift and cleaning service, and those outside the building, all the services to the tenants. Yes, just now the we said uh, here the slide said provided the all these services provided by himself or through hiring of others to do it. So this one, what he does is appoint agent to do these services. So, rental income received by Wahida is under business source on section 4A. Okay, now we look into another example. Unga's property let up one block of office building, but only provide security services. You only provide security services, then rental income received by Unga's is considered non-business source. Okay. Why it is so important to determine whether the rental income received is under business source or investment source. This is due to it will affect the commencement date of letting of property and also it will affect that whether the rental loss it is because not, not every time we rent a property we make profit. Sometimes it is a loss. Uh, so when the rental you incur rental loss and you got other income, can that rental loss offset with the other income or not? And also, if you purchase the aircon furniture and fitting to your tenant, can that expenses can claim as capital allowance or offset against your rental income? Did, this one is determined by whether your rental income is under section 4A or section 4D, business source or investment source. And that's why it's so important to determine your rental is classified under which category. Okay, now we look at the first one. Commencement date of letting of property. If the property is classified under business source, commencement date is First day when property is ready to be let up. This refer to when you got a new property want to let up. Okay, when you you got a CF certificate of fitness, you got the water electricity. As long as got tenant, it can move in immediately. We call it ready to be let up. Okay, for this case under section four A, let's say example. Property ready to be laid out on 1st January 2022, but vacant for a few months due to COVID-19 pandemic, only can rent out on 1st May 2022. How about expenses incurred? You still have to pay your quick rent and assessment insurance because your property already ready to be laid out on 1st January. You already buy insurance, you have to pay quick rent and assessment. Is it deductible or not? Yes. Under Section 4A, business, business source rental income, expenses incurred before you let out your property, it is deductible. You can offset this it against your rental income you receive during that year. So it can offset. So your first January until 30th April, quick rent and assessment, these expenses can offset against your rental income you receive from May to 31st December. 
how about uh, for section 4D investment source rental income? Same thing, commencement date is 1st January 2022. But the first day when property uh, is, uh, is ready to rent out, is considered when the is rented out, uh, is rented out, not ready to be let out. So when property uh, ready to be let out on 1st January 2022, but only able to rent out on 1st May. Then for this case, expenses incurred from 1st January until 30th April is not allowed to offset against rental income from May to December, even though during the same year. So you can see first point, why so important to determine your rental income should be assessed under section 4A or 4D. Uh, so this is a disadvantage, but this applicable only when the first year you rent out your property. Uh, this is the first year only. Okay. Now we look at, I can see the heading, the real property group as one source. Okay. When a person, like this example is Mr. Jimmy. Okay, Mr. Jimmy, he got a few property. So just now I said property only the rental income group under section 4A or section 4D. So his property, he must put it in the rental income 4A or 4D. Okay, for Mr. Jimmy, uh, property A, B, and C, let's say group under section 4A, and total rental income for these three properties is 60,000, and expenses incurred, which is deductible, is 50,000. So you minus it's 60,000 minus 50,000, get a profit 10,000 under section 4A rental income. And for under section 4D rental income, Mr. Jimmy also got another three properties, which is D, E, F. Okay, for these three properties, income is 36,000, expenses incurred is 40,000, so make a loss 4,000. Okay, can this 4,000 loss offset again this 10,000 profit? No because they are under different categories of rental income. Then what happened to this loss? We call it permanent loss. It's a loss you can't carry forward next year. So next year, my section 4D rental income, I got profit. Can I offset with this loss? No, cannot carry forward. So now can see uh, why, why uh, Section 4A and Section 4D, we segregate it so important that we need to classify it. So loss cannot carry forward. For Section 4A rental income, if make a loss, if you've got other sources of income, you can offset with it, or no other sources of income can carry forward next year. Next year got income, then offset with next year income. And this is the advantage for Section 4A rental income. Okay, how about the deposit? When we rent out our property to the tenants, we will collect rental deposit to make sure in case it spoil our things, we can offset it or it quite quickly, quietly shift out. At least we got some uh, deposit in hand uh, to offset our loss. Also, we will collect deposit for water, electricity or gut house access card. Okay, all this deposit is refundable to the tenant. So it is non-taxable income. Okay, now we look at basis of assessment. Okay, rental income for section 4A, it is taxed on a cruel basis, what it means. For example, tenant A pay rental up to November 2021, but in November, December 2021, he still stay there still stay there. So as a landlord, you have to declare 12 months rental income, December income, you have to approve even though your tenant not yet paid to you because you know that he's going to pay you. Uh, this is for section 4A. Taxable income in year 2021, even though not yet received that one month rental. How about for rental income tax under section 4D investment source? Okay. Same scenario, if the tenant uh, in December 
2021 still stay in your house, but pay you rental up to November only. Then what you do, you how you the way you declare your rental income up to November only because it, the for rental income under section 4D, it is assessed on receive basis. Okay, so this is a two different way to assess on your rental income. Okay, another month we look into how about for rental income you receive in advance, your tenant so good, pay you rental in advance. So it will be tax on you in the year you receive it, even though you, you may have to refund to your tenant in future. For example, they want to move up early, but already pay you rental in advance, then you have to refund to them. So, okay, we look into this example. Okay, uh, rental income 2020 is 24,000, 12,000 for year 2020. And another 12,000 is rental paid in advance for year 2021. Okay, but expenses incurred for year 2020 is 4,000. And for year 2021 is 5,000. Okay, this one uh, incurred in year 2021 because, for example, when we pay our when you pay our quick rent and assessment insurance is in the year when you incurred for it, we pay year by year, uh, then only, uh, let's say why, why you say uh, it is in year 2021. Okay, we look at how is the solution to calculate. So when you submit your rental income to income tax, you have to declare it, rental income received in advance, it is taxable in the year you receive it. So year 2020, you receive rental income for 2020 and 2021, declare it together. Expenses incurred in year 2020. Okay, this one, uh, 4,000, you minus it. Expenses related to your rental income, offset against your rental income, only the net rental income is subject to tax. So 20,000, your adjusted income. Uh, in your, I think in your form BE, let's say you, you don't have business income, there's a one column for you to do adjustment for your prior year adjustment. Then in year 2021, when you submit your tax return, your tax form, you need to do the adjustment, less expenses incurred in the year 2021. Uh, you submit this in the following year, adjustment in the following year, year 2021 then you, this is your amended adjusted income. So this 5,000 can offset against this rental income paid in advance, but do adjustment in the year when you incur that expenses, which is in year 2021. This scenario is applied to when the landlord only got one property only, you got no other rental income to offset these expenses. How about uh, we look into another example. How about, okay, Mr. A, it owns property A and B under one source. Okay, under one source. So year 2020, it got property A, it got the income 300,000. Eh? Then expenses 20,000, but this 300,000 is 150,000 for year 2020. 150,000 for renter received in advance, which is for 2021. That's why year 2021, nothing ready. And expenses incurred 2020, 20,000, 2021, 15,000 for property B. Okay, both must be assessed under same source, uh, same source, uh, yeah, same source, section 4D or both under section 4A, then only you can group it together. So for property B, it got the income 120,000 for these two years, also incurred expenses, I think 3,000 plus. I can't see it. Huh? Okay, so year 2020, rental income, these two add together 420 expenses, 20,000 plus this 30,000, 50,000. Okay, so Offset it, adjusted income for year 2020, 370,000. For year 2021, this income only, rental income, 120,000. Less expenses, 
15,000 plus this 30,000. Okay, because we got this property B rental income to offset these expenses. So just add offset directly, then you got the adjusted income 75,000. No need like previous example when do the amendment. Uh, so just same source of income, you can group together, then offset it. How about your tenant already pay you rental in advance, now he moved out already. You need to refund the advance rental payment, what you're supposed to do. For example, uh, your tenant pay you rental in advance in year 2020. Then in year 2021, he moved out early to refund the advance rental in year 2021 then you can claim the tax deduction, offset it, consider as your expenses uh, in year 2021, in the year when you make refund to your tenant. Okay, now we look at the expenses that relating to rating of the real property. Is it deductible or non-deductible expenses? Okay, the basic concept is like that. As long as the expenses incurred is related to your rental income. Practically, it is deductible expenses. For example, uh, cost of repair and maintenance. You will tell your tenant, whatever wear and tear, I will cover. As a landlord, you will cover. So, water pipe leaking, you change the light, all these things, you cover. Yes your deductible expenses offset against your rental income. Insurance premium, we bought a house, we will buy insurance premium to protect ourselves. Related to that house, you rent out deductible expenses. Cost of supervision and rental collection. Okay, for example, waste lake. I know there's a, a management office, so-called Dennis House, okay. Some landlord, they go to Dennis house to rent up their property in Westlake. They pay some fees or so-called commission to Dennis house. Yes, the fees they pay to them, we call it cost of supervision and rental collection. is deductible expenses to the landlord. Because for example, if he want to rent out at 1,000, but they ask Dennis how to collect on behalf. 10% commission only receive net 900. That 100 ringgit each month is deductible expenses to the landlord. Okay, cost of obtaining tenant to replace the old tenant, to replace the keyword replace. Your Utah student after three years graduate or they like to move every, every year they shift the house. So you need to find a new tenant. Either you advertise yourself or you go to the property agent. So this cost incurred to find a new tenant, deductible expenses. Huh? And interest paid on loan facility. You bought that property to rent out to, to financing from the bank. Every month you pay loan interest. So this loan interest is, can offset against your rental income you collected. Cost of renewing rental agreement. If you ask the lawyer to draft a legal uh, rental agreement for you, renewing are uh, not first time. You, are, you every year you change tenant. Yes, this cost is your deductible expenses. Quick rent to get assessment to get into all the house have to pay to get to get into. Yes, deductible expenses. Management fee, sinking fund, and in that water. Okay, management fee and sinking fund, normally for those condominium or management. Management fee, if those uh, uh, those house got the fencing one, yes, also have to pay for it, deductible. In that water, if landlord bear on it, deductible. If your tenant bear on it, of course, you can deduct on it because your tenant paid for it. Repenting of the rented premises. Your, your tenant shift already, you look at it, the wall so dirty, you can ask a uh, renovation people to come here to repaint it. Yes, this cost incurred deductible offset against your rental income. 
pest control expenses, also deductible expenses. Okay, these are the expenses non-deductible. Okay, why non-deductible? Cost of obtaining the first tenant, we call it initial expenses. For example, advertisement or agent's commission. When you got your new house, first time you want to rent it up, this cost incurred, we call it initial expenses together with the legal expenses from the first rental agreement. Now, these three expenses, non-deductible to get the first tenant. How about renovation? Okay, renovation, you look at this example, a house before renovation and after renovation, it looks more attractive. So in future, you want to sell your house, it will, I would say it can, uh, attract more potential buyers and also can sell at a higher price. So renovation costs cannot offset against rental income, but it can offset against the disposal price, means that your selling price when you sell your property. Uh, so, uh, so this one non-deductible in your rental income. Okay. Okay, how about if your house temporarily not occupied that still incurred the expenses like when you pay your equipment and assessment and insurance is for one year basis but now temporarily not occupied for six months or for three months expenses incurred during that few months deductible or not uh, is deductible expenses provided uh, it is fulfilled either these three a uh, situation. First, property is under repair or renovation. For example, your old tenant moved out already and the house looks so run down. So you go and repair it during that repair period, two months, you can't rent out to people. Okay, yes. Uh, these expenses incurred during that two months deductible or it has an absence of tenants for two years after termination. Uh, for example, due to COVID-19 pandemic, uh, uh, Kampa so many house empty uh, since year 2020. As long well as your house empty within two years, and it is the second and third condition said that it must be in a condition that can ready to be let up anytime. Then expenses incurred during that period is deductible. And so the third situation, it faced a legal injunction or other official sanction. So the landlord temporarily can't rent out the house. So under this three scenario, yes, your expenses incurred during the period temporarily nobody occupied is deductible expenses. Okay, we look at this example. One Farida owns two houses as below. Okay, year 2020, this is the income, house one, house two, 2021. Okay, house one got income, house two, nobody occupied, no income. You got no income, you still sure will incur some expenses. Example here is a quick rent and assessment and interest expenses because you purchase the house through housing loan or water and electricity, nobody stay, you still have to pay the minimum charges. So for this case, both house one and two are assessed under same source, section 4D. So you can group it together. Okay, year 2020, rental income 21,600 expenses, and you add together expenses 6,050 ringgit statutory income. Year 2021, only house one got rental income. Okay, never mind. Then, because under same source, so expenses incurred by house two also can offset against rental income from house one because same source, we can group it together. So statutory income from rental, 5,950. How about if I change the scenario? Let's say one Farida only got two, one house, only got this house two. So house two in year 2021 not rent out. 
how about these expenses deductible or not? Even though we said, yes, fulfill that three scenario is deductible, but you got no income to offset it, rental loss, rental zero expenses 2005, and under section 4D, you can't carry forward your rental loss. So permanent loss, non-deductible, uh, permanent loss, nothing to offset. How about if it is it is under section 4A and Puan Parida only got one house only, this house too. Okay, same thing. In year 2021, no income, but incurred these expenses 2005 under section 4A, business source rental income. So this loss, what happened to it? Yes. One Fabida can carry forward this loss to next year. If next year got rental income, it can offset against next year rental income. And that's the difference between section 4D and section 4A rental income. Okay, now we look into the scenario. Okay, so temporary non-occupation, non-occupation, as I mentioned just now, is a rental loss. Okay. We look at this example, rental loss. Section 4A, business source, rental income. So this loss can offset against other business income if the landlord got other business income. If not, carry forward next year to offset against next year income. If next year still net loss, how? Carry forward to another year, the following year again. Huh? Okay, for section 4D investment source rental income. Okay, this rental loss, permanent loss, as I mentioned just now, cannot carry forward. Now we look into this example. Uh, this example is a uh, Mr. A. Mr. A got business wholesale income 100,000. Also got the rental loss from business source 10,000. And Rental loss from section 4D investment source 3000. Okay, it got the under the business of wholesale, it got capital allowance 15,000. Under section 4A business source, it got capital allowance 5000. Capital allowance is a tax relief on the capital expenditure the landlord incurred. It is deductible expenses uh, for these two. So now we look at, uh, at the solution. Okay, business of wholesale, you got 100,000 adjusted income. Less capital allowance, you got statutory income, 85,000. Okay, for section 4A, it make a loss, isn't it? So make a loss, you got no statutory income, no income at loss. Okay, capital allowance, who can carry forward to next year to offset against next year section 4A business source income if it has, if don't have and carry forward again. How about for section 4D? Section 4D investment source, this rental loss 3000 cannot carry forward, cannot offset against other sources of income. We call it permanent loss. Okay, now we you look at this uh, answer. Aggregate income 85,000. And this loss from section 4A business source rental income can offset against this aggregate income. So total income is 75,000 for Mr. A. So this one cannot offset only. So can see the difference between section 4A and section 4B, the treatment for capital allowance and the loss and the rental loss. Okay, now we look at the capital allowance means that tax relief on capital expenditure. Okay, for the section 4A business source income, the if the landlord uh, provide a house we so-called fully furnished, it provide furniture aircon and so this cost incurred for example by furniture and aircon total is 10,000 it can claim as capital allowance over a few years period. Okay, it's like that. Initial allowance 20%, annual allowance 10%. So can claim it over nine years period. 10,000, first year 20%, 2,000. 2,000, 
offset against your rental income. Subsequent year, 1,000, 1,000, within nine years period, you spend money, 10,000 to buy furniture and aircon, can offset against your rental income over nine years period. How about for this investment source rental income? No, only can be done on replacement basis. What it means? Okay, this Mr. A, the rental income is at access under section 4D. First, also provide house fully furnished. Also incurred 10,000 to buy furniture and aircon. First time purchase, non-deductible, only replacement. It means so first time your 10,000 gone already, yeah, not like just some, you can claim it over nine years period. Now it's gone. Only on replacement means that after a few years, let's say after five years later, the table, chair, spoil ready, aircon not so good ready. So Mr. A go and buy a new one for the tenant. Now spend 15,000. So this 15,000, let's say it purchased it in year 2022. Okay, 15,000 is can offset against rental income in year 2022. Uh, because it is on replacement basis. The whole 15,000 deduct in year 2022. Okay, now we look at how about if the property, the landlord rent out is used as industrial building. If used as industrial building for both under section 4A or section 4D investment source income, industrial building can claim capital allowance from both also can. For example, factory, the building they rent out is under as factory, warehouse, child care center, old fox care center, kindergarten, etc. can claim capital allowance. Factory, warehouse is initial allowance. The first thing you can on it is IA 10% plus annual allowance 3%. Subsequent year, 3% uh, can claim it over many years. Childcare center, old folks home, kindergarten is claim it over 10 years, period 10% per year. It means that, for example, Mr. A is a landlord. He purchased this childcare center. He, he ran out as a childcare center or old folks home. I said it's 100,000. The, the cost is 100,000. Then this landlord, he can claim 800,000 times 10% is 10,000. Uh, so can offset from his rental income as capital allowance 10,000. So no need to pay so much cap, uh, tax off. So that's the meaning can claim capital allowance. Okay. Now we look at this example. Uh, this, before the end of my talk, we look at this last example. Okay. Mr. Jimmy provide the following information regarding his residential property in Chalak year ended 31st December. Okay, rent, this is the money uh, Jimmy received. Rental January to March, April to May, nobody stay. Uh, because uh, people who tenant moved out already, it renovated, it uh, renovate, uh, re repair during April and May. June and December to June to December, uh, receive rental income 24,000. Deposit refundable. So I put a two cross here, non taxable income. Okay, payment. The ex tenant moved up already. He paid back the deposit. So this is a non deductible expenses because when you receive the deposit, it's not your taxable income. And the assessment, quick rent. Okay, quick rent. Uh, for year 2020, this is uh, for you to compute year 2021. So 2020, not deductible in year 2021, but you can do an adjustment backward to offset against 2020 rental income. So 2021 deductible, interest on loan, January to December, yes, whole year deductible because temporarily not occupied, uh, the building temporarily not occupied is because under renovation. So deductible whole year. Same thing for your quick rent and assessment, whole year deductible. Penalty, don't care whatever reason. Penalty always non-deductible expenses. 
Okay, repair and maintenance. Repainting. Repainting is under repair and maintenance, deductible expenses. Renovation to kitchen and bathroom, non-deductible. Renovation costs will offset against your uh, disposal price when you sell your property. Replacement of damaged tasks under repair and maintenance, yes, deductible expenses. Installation of air con. Okay, this one, the question said, this rental income under section 4B. So installation, first time install, non-deductible expenses. If under section 4A can claim, then you can claim the capital allowance. Okay, let's look at the answer. Okay. Rental income to add that 16,024,000 and, and assessment quick rent 2021 deductible interest on loan repenting deductible replacement of damaged task. Okay, all these are deductible expenses can use to offset against your rental income. So your adjusted income is only 21,000. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. If you've got any question to ask me, yeah, you can ask me now. Huh? Let me see the chat box got any question. Or not. Okay, uh, got. Okay, no question here. Uh, no question inside the chat box. Okay, any question from the floor? You can ask me now any question from the floor. Can rental income will be taxed under investment holding company? Uh, investment holding company, uh, yeah. uh, I think is tax tax exempted, if not mistaken, is tax exempted. Okay, any other question? Uh, this is for company. Uh, my today's talk is on, I would say it's more on individual. Uh, investment holding company, uh, this is a company. It got the, it got a special rule uh, because, uh, how to say, uh, your, it's, it's different, your, Expenses deductible is limited, we call it permitted expenses. That's why quite a number of the income is tax exempted under investment holding company. Okay, now another question. Uh, Inda water is under utility. Can it be considered as deductible? Okay, if the landlord, if the landlord said, because uh, Inda water is under separate bill, uh, if the landlord agree to pay in the water for the tenant, then yes, the landlord can deduct on, on it. Okay, if a factory building partial rented out, the renter is taxed under section 4A or 4D. Okay, uh, if it is classified as factory building, okay, if, if let's say, partially as factory building and partially not as factory building. Okay, want to be classified as a factory building. Uh, actually, there is a rule, we call it 10% rule. Uh, your office portion or your, those, uh, I think office portion and the, yes, office portion shouldn't be more than 10% of your total floor area. In this case, I would say it partially rented as a factory building, only that portion can claim capital allowance, proportionate, uh, proportionate to compute it. Okay, here is it. For uh, what partial support and maintenance section 4A or 4D? Uh, Okay, if forward partial support only, like I at first my I think my second slide to determine whether your rental income under section 4A or 4D, partial support is under section 4D. You must be actively provided all the ancillary services to your 
tenant, then only your rental income can be classified as Section 4A. In that side, it's not easy to get it uh, to, to, to tax under Section 4A. Okay. For 4D, uh, this is another question. Uh. For Section 4D, rental based on receipt, how about expenses based on payment or incurred? Uh, okay. I would say based on based on you if based on rental on receipt your yeah, payment uh, I, I never look into this one uh. logically thing I would say payment will be based on okay expenses will be based on incurred it should be based on incurred if you make payment in next year, okay, for example, your quick rent and assessment, you owe it. Like just now, my last example, my last example, uh, okay, you talk about based on receipt basis, uh, so you apply the same concept. Then your quick rent and assessment for year 2021, you make payment in year 2022. If you talk about based on uh, incurred basis, then it should be, you have to do the adjustment prior year adjustment uh, for this one. you Because you haven't made payment, you can't minus it in year 2021. You only make payment in year 2022. Then in year 2022, you do the adjustment. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, okay. This one. House flooring packet O and lifted. If changed to tile, Floor, is it considered as renovation or replacement? Okay, very good question. Uh, just now, my example got talked about uh, change the damage task. Okay, uh, actually, there is a concept is like that. You know? If uh, we do taxation, when you talk about when you change the thing to a better quality, to a better quality, then it is a uh, considered capital expenditure non deductible. For this case, okay, your your packet or oh, you change to a tar floor. If you packet to packet, nah, you packet you change to packet. We say in a same quality, same standard. Then it's under repair and maintenance. But you are from a packet to tar floor floor. I would say it classified as renovation. And uh, uh, we got a rule like this. Even though you change your rooftop, also same thing. If you change to a better quality one, then we said yes, it's a capital expenditure. It is uh, we said deductible because classified as a revenue expenditure. If you classify your expenses incurred under capital expenditure, then you can offset it with your rental income. So for this case, I would say it's under renovation non-deductible uh, offset against when you when you when you when you sell your house okay any more question okay for expenses without receipt like glass cutting can we create own payment voucher uh i will say it's dangerous uh, uh if you get because now we are under self-assessment system if IRB audit on you, how are you going to answer? You better ask the glass cutter to give you a receipt on a safer side. Huh? How to claim the capital allowance in the form B as there's no place to fill only carry forward can be stated. Okay, actually I never claim on it, but I think you should you yourself should do a simple worksheet. Do your own calculation. Do your own calculation like how much your rental income minus your expenses, then minus your capital allowance, then only you declare the net rental income. Yeah, I think uh, because I myself, I declare from BE. Uh, okay, I think... Any more? Can claim for providing Wi-Fi and Astro? Uh, 
uh, I never see this example, but this if you forward to them, I will say, okay, you provide Wi-Fi and Astro, then you, uh, if your rental income is higher, isn't it? Because you say fully furnished, you provide this, then I will say, yes, you can deduct it. Then if I be audit on you, you just argue that why I rent out so expensive because I provide Wi-Fi and Astro. So this is my cost incurred. So should be use it to offset you against your rental income. But my example, I, I will say, I look at the Indian Bank Board example, it never mentioned these expenses, whether can be done or not. Like it, it never mentioned that. If a three-story complex, first floor is own use and the two floor is rented out, rental income need to split up as other income or combined as one source business income. Okay, first floor, own use, of course, no rental income. Uh, another two floor. Okay, if another two floor, if under both under section 4D, group together, ungroup together. If under section 4A, also group together as a one source. Okay. Replace all aircon deductible, yes, for the section 4D rental income, yes. Offset against your rental income in the year you replace the O account. Okay, another example. If insurance is prepaid for next year, then the expenses should be minus for this year or next year. Uh, you should do the, we call it prepayment account. Uh, you should do prepayment, just like we do accounting. Uh, we do prepayment, then it will be Offset in next year. You you do you do a prepayment. So exactly deduct your insurance is for this year only. Then another one is for your next year only deduct. Okay, house owner more than one person. How to proportion that? Okay, depends on your percentage you own the house. 50-50 or 60-60. Huh? Depends on your percentage. Okay, still got some more questions now. Okay, accounting, according to, wait, wait, according to public ruling, for rental income subject to taxable in section 4A, it mentioned the terms of maintenance and support services. Please provide some example for a rental income from a normal condominium to be treated as section 4A income evidence and case law. Okay, I got no case law. I can't tell case law unless I go and open the book. Okay, for a normal condominium, like just now the first three examples I give you, normally condominium, all the facility provided is through management office, like the gym, security guard, the landscaping, the car park. The landlord just pay management fee only. So for this case, landlord for condominium rental income received is classified under section 4D. Unless that landlord very rich, he owned the whole condominium. He himself set up that management office. He himself provided all this facility. Then yes, rental income under section 4A. Okay, question two. Can we choose not to declare rental income that does not have a valid stamping tenancy agreement or expire did not renew? Uh, I would say up to you. Uh, you didn't declare. Uh, if IRB audit on you, and uh, now IRB can access up to our bank account. Uh, if they see your bank account every month, got received rental income, some of your, your tenant very smart when it bank in, they put there, we got a, how to say, it? when you bank in money to somebody, we can put a remark, then it put there, rental income for January, rental income for February, then if I already audit your bank account, uh, then you cannot run away, uh. so, so it's up to you. Okay, 
how to determine the percentage based on what criteria? I, I don't know uh, this percentage is referred to what percentage, so I can't answer this question. Okay, can I set off the losses? Doctor, sorry, just now about the house owner. Uh, okay. uh, belong to uh, more than one person. So let's say husband and wife. So how do we need to uh, declare the income between uh, the husband and wife on based on what criteria? Because you're saying uh, based on ownership, but, but then ownership, how do we determine? Or is it based on who is paying the installment? Yeah. Or any criteria? Okay, your agreement, uh, how to say your agreement? If they said to me, if they said based on uh, your agreement, is it 50 50 or how is it in when the tenancy you, agreement or SAP agreement? How how it mentioned? Sorry, in what agreement again? Sales and purchase agreement. Oh, usually not mentioned on uh, no percentage is mentioned, it's only like how many names, how you know, many who are the owners. Yeah, okay, if like that, I will say is better like 50 50, like if you got two person, unless you can justify you say one third, two third, like that. No? Oh, even though the tenancy agreement is actually signed by one person, signed by one landlord, the house owned by two person, but tenancy agreement signed by one person, and, and one person is paying the installment. One person pay the installment. Mm. Uh, and I would say if the tenancy agreement, no, no, sorry, the sales and purchase agreement, if got two person, I would say mm. the income should be shared by that two person. Okay. House belong to that two person. Okay. So yeah. meaning uh, after I get the net uh, net rental income, then I have to divide by two, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Okay. Okay. Another question. Can I set off the losses from rental income uh, A against the profit of rental B and an individual taxpayer? Okay. Your in rental income A and rental income B, is it same source? If both under section 4D or both under section 4A, yes, no problem. If one section 4A, one section 4D, then cannot offset. Okay, uh, renovation for rented property. Is it tax deductible or capital allowance can be claimed? Okay, uh, renovation, uh, you cannot claim capital allowance. Uh, can, cannot claim on it. Only can uh, offset when you sell your house, uh, offset from your disposal price. Uh, okay, that's all. Any more questions? If not, uh, four o'clock already can end the class. I can end this talk. No more questions. Any more questions? All right. Okay. It looks okay. Um, Do, yeah. Uh, no more questions. So, Joy, so we can end this talk already. Yeah, mm, okay. Uh, it looks like we've covered all our questions. So, thank you, Dr. Tan, for your valuable insights on things to know when declaring rental income to the Inland Revenue Board. We would like to take a group photos with everyone in this webinar. Please turn on your camera and stand by. So, Dr. Tan, you have to stop sharing your screen. Yeah. Uh, stop sharing. Okay, okay. So, I, I put a stop share. Uh, okay. So I also, uh, okay, so on my car, in three, two, one, now, okay, we'll take one more photo, three, two, one, now, okay, okay, all right. So ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of today's webinar. We wish to thank Dr. Tan for being with us today and sharing her expertise and knowledge with us. So participants, please also submit your evaluation form for this webinar as well. And then please do not forget to sign out your attendance as well. And it has been a great pleasure having all of you with us today. We would like to extend our sincere apologies for any inconveniences caused. Hope to see you all again. Thank you everyone and stay safe. Thank you so much, Dr. Tang. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Tang. Thank you, Joyce. Yeah, yeah. you're welcome. Yeah.
Dr. Tan, quick one. Uh, do you mind to share the slides uh, just now? Because while you're explaining, there's so, so many technicalities, then certain part I have not uh, managed to di digest. Yeah. Uh, I, I Actually, I already emailed my slide to Joyce. Joyce can uh, email yeah, yeah. So I will okay, share the so presentation much. slides and also the uh, FB live session link because just now we have to do the uh, go live in the FB as well. So I will email the slides and also the link to all the participants after the webinar. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Very useful information. Thank you, Dr. Tan. Yeah, yeah no problem. Thank you so much.